Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I've been studying um, at MIT, but and also um, how I've come to that place, um, and and then the outcomes. Um, so I'm a community organizer. Um, two of my dear mentors are in this room with Kenny and Naj, um, and. I came to organizing work because I believe in our liberation and, and seeing that little boy sing um, how great they are, it just, it just um, sort of set home for me what, what it is that, that we're doing. Um, but after 15 years of community organizing, I became tired. I became tired of banging my head against the wall. I've been, I became tired of knocking on the same doors and either seeing the same people or different people. Um, but I really just felt like I was in this cycle of faux liberation, right? Where, where um, I would feel a victory and, um, you know, the victory was probably formed around the RFP um, for the grant that we needed to get in order to do our work. Um, and so, so all of it sort of felt inauthentic um, to me. And at the same time, a lot of my networks are in the entertainment field um, and in marketing and advertising. Um, and so they were using technology to reach their consumers and it mirrored the work that I wanted to do. Right? So, they, so you know, they were working for Hennessy or whatever and they would go into Roxbury and they would have a you know, a billboard that they could project on the Ferdinand building that would get you to text back to tell them what, how you like to drink your Hennessy, and they would get your cell phone number, and you would get a little coupon, you know, texted to your phone, helping you get some Hennessy and maybe, you know, some Coke or however you like to drink it, right? And so I'm looking at this technology, and I'm like, uh, I, 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 I want that billboard, but I wanted to ask about freedom. And then how do I get those phone numbers, right? Like, so I'm watching my, you know, I'm, I'm watching my friends who, who are, you know, using this technology and who corporations are just throwing money at it, right? They're like, yeah, 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 develop more. We need to get in people's cell phones. Develop it more. So they're developing this technology, right? Corporations and marketing is using this technology. They're reaching our kids because we're Facebook connecting all the time. We don't care. We just want free stuff. I'm like, oh, I'll text it. I'll do this. Right? So we're doing all of that. And meanwhile, I'm knocking on a goddamn door with a fucking clipboard. Okay? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a cell phone now, Nod. So I'm not going to let you get away with that. I'm not going to let you get away with that. Um, and so, so I became, I just became very frustrated because I felt like not only was I watching the tools I need be developed and be effectively used in our community, Pepsi does this amazingly well, right? Like whether any of you guys tried to get $25,000 from the Pepsi challenge or whether you tried to get a million dollars by submitting a commercial, right? Pepsi has, has been able to do this model really, really well. And I was becoming very frustrated. And one of the things that, um, that was really frustrating to me was even within my own organizing community, it was very difficult to get people to see that this technology was, actually, was useful, right? And, and while we all understood Big Brother, right, and we all understand COINTELPRO, and this is very real, this isn't faux, right? Um, we were sort of letting that stop us from, from doing our work, right? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was working for an old school activist elder um, by the name of Harry Belafonte, and one of the things that I found out in his story was his psychiatrist was COINTELPRO. Mm -hmm. um, and for 30, you know, for almost about 30 years he was laying on a couch. So, so it, it made, I, I say that to say it made me realize that I'm worried about this and about them tapping into this, but if they want to get me, they'll just get my therapist, <laughs> right? And like, you know, she hasn't been able to raise her rates for me for years because she's quite expensive, so I'm sure they could buy her off pretty easily. And, and it, just, it just put it in context for me, right, around what, what we're denying ourselves because of something of a real fear that is still going to be real whether we use technology or not, 
right? So, so I, I, I felt the need to start pushing back on, on some of our organizers, right? And being like, well, hold on, did we feel this way about the telephone, right? Because that's what this is, right? Like, what did we do as organizers when we invented, or when we invented, and then when we started using the printing press, right? I mean, like, that was a great tool for us. It was really helpful. The telephone, great tool, very helpful, right? So again, if we keep it in line with that history, we just see that this is the next thing. Not only is this the next thing, but it's actually created in a way, as Fox just so amazingly showed us, that, that reduces, if not removes, a majority of barriers of entry, right? I mean, this just drops the, the barriers to what, uh, what used to prevent us from participating, right? I mean, so, so even, the, e even the, the culture of it, right? I mean, folks love open source who are in this field, right? Like, they like to share and, and you know, you know they, they, they have a totally different view on it, right? Um, and, and so I, I wanted to study more about that um, and really apply my community organizing lens to it. Um, and so I accepted a Mel King fellowship at MIT um, in dust and being an organizer, I immediately went over to the media lab and was like, tried to organize some scientists um, in the media lab. Um, and I started with a very small goal. Um, so I, I, I'm of the belief that in years, in the future, however long or short that might be, political parties are no longer going to exist. And the reason why I believe that is because I think they play the same role as book publishers, as music publishers, right? They play a relationship role and they play a bridge role, which no longer really needs to exist mm -hmm. once we figure out how to use technology to answer that, right? In the same way music publishing and book publishing has done. Yeah. When you look at, at models like the Tea Party, which is one of the models that, that I studied, what you see is that what made the Tea Party vibrant, beside their very strong shared ideology, was that they could take advantage of their loose ties, right? They could take advantage of their fourth, fifth degrees of separation through technology. So if I'm a left, or if I'm, I wouldn't be a lefty if I'm a Tea Party, but so if I'm a Tea Party member, I can find other people quite easily that I might not have found because I wouldn't know they were Tea Party. Right? I wouldn't know that there's some fascist, like, crazy person. I just knew them as my neighbor. You know, but now I know that we can do a fundraiser together um, and, and come up with some ideas, right? So, so that, and, and so I wanted, to, I wanted to study that primarily because I do believe that that's what we're going to see um, in, in the future with political parties. And also I wanted to find a way to stop the voter registration pimping that happens to our community every election. Mm. <laughs> and I hate the van. I come out of electoral organizing. Um, and what frustrated me every year was, first of all, that our data was some of the hardest to reach data, so it should have been the most fucking expensive. Okay? And but what they would do is they would come to us every year, mm -hmm. and what would they offer us? Five dollars a voter reg card. That's right. Right? And we would go back to the same communities okay. that we know. We don't need a voter file because we're in the community, so we know. Mm -hmm. I know Najma. I don't need Najma's voter reg card. I just need to know that Najma can vote this election, right? And that I can turn around. So I, I had this fantasy in my mind that we could create some form of technology that would allow organizers to literally create a living list. So rather than us being pimped out every even year to sell our data at $5 a voter reg card, where, where again, we've been talking to these people every day, so they just give us something, you know, we have to do it all over again in August, right, to, to make that grant cycle. Um, that, Can you explain a little bit what, how that works, the $5 reg card? Oh, okay, the so, they, yes, the, yes, the they, right, the they is DC. So the they is, um, you know, like right now, so in a, for Obama in 2008, he spent $700 million. A good chunk of that was on media, and I would say probably 100 and some change was in the field. Um, the, way they, the way they organize and do turnout to communities of color, because our voter file, our, our list of registered voters is always bad. It's about 13 to 15% accurate because we're a very, um, you know, we're a mi we, we migrate, right, we move, we're... Um, so they go to community-based organizations within inner cities and they ask them to register their membership. 
and then turn in their voter reg cards to DC. And that's what the van is, the voter activation network. Um, and they won't touch it again. They won't touch our community again for another two years, right? And then they have to, and they have to go back. And, um, and so it, it was just, it was a power setup that just pissed me off. You know what I mean? Like, like it was this thing where it was like, well, we actually are holding on to these, like we have the hardest, re I mean, we have the best resources, right? We have your base for Democrats, and I mean that in the most nonpartisan whatever way, I'm not promoting anything. Um, but, you know, so we have your base, and your base is hard to reach, and your base doesn't trust you. We have trust, we have your base, and we know how to reach your base, right? So like, yeah. so like we should definitely be not just getting paid $5 a voter, a hedge card. Um, 